I'm sitting there watching the commercial. Now it's finally hitting me. <laughs> they had this thing with the Subaru commercial, and the kid's sitting there. You know, ah, it's not that bad. And, it, you know, the operation, I'll have this and that and that. It's like, if we didn't have extortion, debt, and trespass, and undue stress and toxic environments and stuff, it, it, your body would um, be healthier, and we wouldn't have to um, donate money from car companies that we have to pay money for for five years to get that car to drive to a job to pay for a house for 30 years okay it is that bad okay the the discomfort from the disease that affects the child that the parents have to stress out because they're driving cars to jobs to pay for the insurance for the disease and then the company that's causing most of the problems that cause the disease is just we're strong and we do this and we donate money to charity to save children's lives <laughs> it is that bad and we shouldn't have to cut into healthy bodies. Remember that one? I was, um, it was interesting, and I liked it because you know it reminded me of today's nutritionist is tomorrow's physician. When McCoy sat there and said, "You know, this is barbaric having to cut into a healthy body," you know, and that's where, uh, you know, today's nutritionist is tomorrow's physician. You know, the the body should be able, you know, Jesus heal thyself. It should be able to heal itself. Without you know, without having to cut into it, and uh, you know, the disease is is mostly man's creation, and the cure to disease is man not creating disease to cure it. Okay, and you know, and the, the aliens, you know, I help people with the disease of the mind. Why do they want to kill? Because it's a disease created by human beings because of competition and comparison, and men wanting to release chemicals in their brain to make themselves feel um, feelings that, you know, give them comfort. And, and you know, it's like Judy was talking about, they're always constantly seeking comfort. Murder is to seek comfort, and they get comfort in killing. Okay? And the hunt, and the thrill, and they get off on the people, you know, and they say, why are they killing these boys? Because they're kids, and kids get more scared. Okay, they, that night with that one with the, I thought the big guy was in here, I, when I was a kid, oh shit, that would have been the scariest thing in the whole world. As an old man who had been through shit, I just set up in my bed, put my, set up, put my hands over my knees and shoulders and said, okay, let's go, <laughs> let's do this. You know, as a kid I would have been scared, but I put, I would have fought, put up a fight and reacted. Well, my endorphins, <laughs> probably could have killed somebody. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, you know, just take my fingers, try to shove them through their eyes, you know, do anything to just get away and kick and scream and stuff. And, um, you know, I, <laughs> my brother-in-law, when they were being mean to me and I did, I, I wailed at them and just got away and ran away because they were being mean to me. They told me I would fight like a pussy and <laughs> sissy. And I was like, I wasn't fighting with you. I just wanted you to let me go and let me run away and get away from everybody because they were being mean. I'm not stupid enough to hit you. He bench pressed. Like, <laughs> I used to watch him bench press with him, pick up all those weights, and they were huge. And I was like, wow, my brother in law is so strong. But I would never hit him. I loved him too much. You know, I wasn't trying to be mean and hit him. I just wanted him to let me go because people were being mean, and I just wanted to get away from them. I was sick of them. <laughs> Fuck, I just want to go up in the treehouse, go run somewhere, and just get away from you people. You're mean. You know, <laughs> that day when they. My sisters were being bitches, and it was raining outside, and it was gonna, it was hailing, it was starting to hail, and they locked the door and locked us out. And I had two friends with me. I had Paul and Chris, and I kept banging on the window, let us in. And my sisters, ha, ah, were laughing at us, and I just, I put my hand through the. It was a, our kitchen window had a glass on it, and I put my hand through it, cutting my arm on it, unlocking the door because they were trying to keep me from unlocking it. I cut my arm, my got a scar somewhere on the, where I cut my arm on the on the window and opened the door and had my friends go inside. His sisters, you're going to get in trouble. They got in trouble. Because <laughs> Dad sat there and he goes, what? There was, I said, it was raining like the hell was coming down and they were laughing at us and had the door locked. And you don't do that when you have, you know, you don't do that, period. But you don't do that when you have guests over. And they got in trouble, and I didn't. <laughs> it's like, you're such an ass. 
well, the, who do, I've ne I would never, you know, my sister's were with their friends there, and it's raining outside, you know, raining, it could be a thunderstorm, and stand there and have people stand outside in a thunderstorm and laugh at them. I would never do that. So I can see, it's, you know, I, I thought it was kind of ironic and funny because I was worried. I thought I was going to get a spanking because I broke the window in the front door. And you have to go buy a new one, and it's expensive, you know. And we didn't have a lot of money, and we were poor. And so I thought, God, I'm in trouble. You know, and I thought, well, he could put a... <coughs> in the meantime, he could get, like, one of those painting boards like he did with the other one when he fixed the window once when it's broken and just put it for board until we can get a window in it. As a matter of fact, it's... For a door, it might be better to have the board in it than a window anyway. <laughs> than a window in the door anyway. Because it doesn't make much sense to have a door that locks with a glass pane window, just one thin pane window in it. You know, I, I always thought about that too. In our kitchen door, we had a, it, the door locked, but it just had a thin pane big window in it and a lock on it. it that's not... The only ways that it would lock would be to say you could keep up these, you can't get in, but it would be so easy to get in. All you had to do was, you know, I was 10 years old, put my fist through the window and open the door, you know, so I, I've never understood that. <laughs> you have a lock on a door with the window on it, and it's like, okay. <laughs> All you got to do is just get a, get a, a rock and go open it and walk on in so you know this this place you know every well, lots of places most places have doors with windows on them or windows you know window window doesn't if someone's gonna do you harm a window's not gonna keep them out you know it's just boom okay so all these people with illusions of safety i'm safe in my home you know and that Tracy Chapman, why is a woman still not safe when she's in her home? Because we have a bunch of sick fucking people that make us pay to live here and make us value money over people's lives. That's why. Okay? You don't have to write a song and make lots of money and have a bunch of hypocrites show up at a fucking concert to answer that question. You know, why did the baby starve when there's enough food to feed the world? Because you can make money off of death. Because we value money more than life. And if you have too many people, you can't make money because everybody will eat each and, and kill each other to death over the resources. So we got to manage the resources. So we got to make sure those babies starve instead of feed them. Okay? Because we have archaic religious beliefs. We don't have technology to sit there and educate people as, as intelligently. And a lot of these people are just fucking crazy because they won't listen. I do that in my own family. Okay? I will sit there and tell them. Jesus was not saying he's God. He was saying he is the way to the faith in God. And if you can apply physics like him, you can have heaven here on earth. But you can't believe in magic stuff, that magic stuff is waiting in the sky for you, and that magic stuff is going to fix everything after you screw it up. You have to do it yourself through relative prayer communication. It's in the Quran, too. You can't have any more women and children than you can afford. He believes in life and things that are given to you by God for life, not money. So I'll sit there and tell people that, and it's like, yeah, but Jesus is God and died for our sins. Fuck! And then you get the atheist, and they'll sit there, they're crazy, they believe in God, that's just nuts. We're, okay, so why, but why, since it's based on applied physics, why don't we apply the physics to those players so we don't have to murder each other over money? I ain't got time to talk to you, I gotta go to college and get a piece of paper that says I can make more money to pay people to live here on planet Earth. All right. And the religious people are crazy? <laughs> You're like sitting there going... Fuck! <laughs> you people are fucked! You got the magic cloud kingdom afterlife people, and then you got the people chasing pieces of paper to pay people pieces of paper to manipulate the resources to try to kill all the people that are the magic cloud people after you die. You people are fucked! I don't want one godforsaken stupid fucking atheist to talk about killing religious people and that they're the biggest problem in the world when you will gladly kill people for papers and rocks and credit scores. Shit, you're fucking stupid. You're just as stupid as the religious people. You're stupider. Because at least they think when they die they're going to go to a magic place where things are nice and they don't have to coexist with fuckers like you. You think you die and just are worm food. Fucking idiots. 